Welcome to Killick and Co's podcast on Tuesday the 12th of March. Just a quick reflection back on last week because we did see some volatile trading conditions. Monday mark, the market opened a uh, week on the back of events in Ukraine. Um, the recovery um, built between Tuesday and Wednesday despite the fact that we had increasingly disappointing data coming up from the US. Indeed, just looking at the sort of surprise index um, where it data either exceeds or falls below expectations, the level of surprise to the downside on US data at the moment is the worst that we've seen since 2008. So it's not been a very good start um, for US data. Much of it, though, coming down to the fact that people are blaming the extreme weather we've seen in the US um, and, of course, the disappointing data in China at the moment, again, being sort of levelled at the fact that there is a timing issue in terms of the new year. So the market taking a fairly sanguine view about all of that and, indeed, initially responded quite positively to the jobs data on Friday, the non-farm payrolls coming in at better than expected. Um, although that was subsequently sold into um, when we saw some movements in some of the commodity markets. So where do we stand today? Well, generally the UK market uh, sits somewhere um, in the middle of the range at the moment. It's failing to take out the 19.99 high of 69.30, shying away from that level, sort of rattling back back into the sort of 67 range so far. A quick look at um, some of the events. We've had numbers out this morning on Tuesday of Eshore Group which slightly exceeded expectations. No real impact from the weather in Q4, that sort of lead up to December. There will be a modest impact of three to four million pounds uh, from, from the flooding, but they have over two million policies, so that should be absorbed fairly comfortably. And they're paying out around 85% of their profits, so the dividend uh, being paid is around 15.8 pence. Good numbers from Foxtons, 17% um, growth. They're mainly coming from the letting side of the business, the sales side hasn't really started to pick up at the moment, so even in flat markets they say they're doing quite well um, in terms of mortgage broking and opening up new branches. It's going to be a thinner week, no question for, for data points um, in terms of some of the companies reporting Prudential announcing their results on Wednesday. We had some cracking numbers out of Aviva last week. That's more of a particular story to Aviva. It's the turnaround strategy there that's being uh, imposed by the new CEO and he said it's happening faster than he expected and that resulted in a 10% uplift. Will Pru be able to do the same? Well it's a different story at the Pru. Um, the real driver for the growth over the course of the last few years which has allowed such outperformance of that stock price has been driven by its emerging markets exposure. Um, given the worries that have started to emerge in uh, the emerging market over the course of the last few months. The question is, is that beginning to impact on Prudential's business? More on that one um, as we come through tomorrow. We'll also keep a bit of an eye on some of the supermarkets. There's no question that price wars are being initiated. The Sunday Times revealing that the William Morrison Group are going to invest £500 million into aggressive price cuts. They're going to try and attack the market share that is gradually being eroded from them um, by the likes of Aldi and Lidl and also Tesco entering into the frame with some wholesale pricing. So there's no question at all supermarkets have found it quite tough with competition and they are engineering some price cuts around the board. We are hearing background discussions though, um, noises about uh, potential for food inflation to pick up over the course of the coming months. Um, we are seeing droughts in, um, in Brazil which is impacting significantly on the price of coffee and of course Ukraine which exports around 16% of the world's wheat demand um, as well. Um, we're seeing wheat prices rise given the, the problem that are beginning to emerge in the Ukraine at the moment. Just um, talking of commodities, a couple of charts that are influencing uh, the mining sector at the moment. This is the iron ore price. And we can see there that it's had a, a very significant decline um, as a, a sort of a input into the steel market. Um, China plays a handsome role in the pricing of the iron ore market and uh, they um, certainly having seen a slowdown there has seen the price come off very sharply. You can see from the 140 level at the end of 2013 down to where we are today at 104. Consensus expectations for companies most exposed to the iron ore price like Rio Tinto for example um, remain around the $90 level so as a result of that even though these falls are significant in size I don't think that analysts necessarily um, have factored in the higher prices we were achieving during the course of the end of 2013-2014.
2013. But nevertheless, Rio Tinto was a very firm starter to 2014. Its shares climbing by sort of 15% or so, but it has retraced all of those gains um, in the course of the last two to three weeks. So a very sharp reversal of fortunes for the mining stocks and playing a very central role in the reason why I think the FTSE is struggling to take out the top. We also keep an eye on copper. Copper is a very... Um, um, very significant sort of monitored commodity um, for economic sentiment around the world and again copper is really just nestling on that sort of very low end of the trading range and if I were to extend that chart out by five years you would see that as being a sort of low level if it were to fall below it I'm sure the chartists would have something to say about the future direction of those um, of those uh, uh, of that particular commodity just finally a few few little, um, observations um, around and about um, we, we saw quite a firm uptick in the yields of the US 10-year. Um, it's one of the strongest moves last week on the back of those non-farm payroll numbers that we've seen um, for many, many months and uh, taking that yield back into the sort of 2.7, 2.8, still range bound, um, but um, nevertheless that's a, a notable mover. China stock market um, also had a poor session um, towards the end of uh, last week and beginning of this week. Um, China exports uh, year on year have dropped by about 18% and it's certainly lending credibility to the story that China isn't as competitive as it used to be at the moment and as a result of that um, sourcing is taking place elsewhere in the world. Maybe the whole concept of reshoring US investors or US industries reversing back to more domestic based demand um, is really taking hold and impacting on the Chinese stock market. That is one of our themes, so um, again if you want to have a look at the whole reshoring exercise in the US, um, do speak to your broker about that, um, about, about that particular theme. In terms of um, just finally a couple of stocks, and or one stock finally to mention would be Rolls-Royce. Um, it is one of our shares for the year. It didn't have the best of starts with a guidance warning of around 10% lower for 2014 based upon its defence uh, budgets. Um, that was a disappointment to markets, but uh, on Friday we heard that uh, Daimler is exercising a put option um, to uh, release its 50% share in the power systems business. It's a joint venture with Rolls-Royce. Rolls-Royce are going to take that business over at $1.9 billion. Very financeable from resources. The market likes the deal and the shares actually rebounded quite well on the back of it. Um, other companies in the defence sector like Megit and BAE Systems have also been in decline recently so the sector wide issues but um, as I say Rolls-Royce our preferred pick and after the sort of poor start to 2014 with value buyers at around these sort of levels.